I think for crypto blockchain, it's beyond one single thing now. So 2017, there was ICOs, right? That was ERC-20 tokens, basically. Um, and 2020, even 2021, there's multiple things going on. The next one may be multiple things. Um, it's no longer a single thing that drives adoption, I think, uh, because the industry is bigger, there's more players, so there's different sectors. We should be looking at what's the next big NFT thing? Or what's the ne next big DeFi thing? What's the next big uh, new things? Um, maybe social media for crypto has not been invented yet, right? So, um, and there's some old use cases that have not taken off, but are slow, are starting to, uh, payments. Millions of cryptocurrency investors, developers, executives of exchanges, and other crypto-related firms and other stakeholders in the industry are on the lookout for the next big thing in crypto. In previous years, we've seen things like decentralized finance, DeFi, non-fungible tokens, initial coin offerings, ICOs, better evolved payment systems, and other important developments significantly excite investors and positively impact prices. After the past year's turmoil, collapses, and the regulatory witch hunt against the industry, everyone is quite ready for something huge. According to Binance founder and chief executive officer Changpeng Zhao, popularly known as CZ, the cryptocurrency industry is at a stage where one can expect multiple money-making opportunities to pop up almost at the same time. CZ and Binance are expecting and preparing for such opportunities to pop up anytime soon. In a recent interview, the Chinese-born Canadian business executive, who has been the subject of several mainstream media smear campaigns in the past few months, highlights his outlook for the cryptocurrency industry amid the many problems currently facing the global economy. During the interview with the Bankless podcast, CZ gives a recap of previous bull and bear crypto markets and what the past could be telling us about the present state of the industry. The Binance CEO believes we are in the recovery stage from last year's turmoil and lots of new and revamped opportunities will soon begin to pop up for investors with enough motivation and funds to jump in. CZ also discusses market cycles and why the world urgently needs crypto. We will now bring you clips from CZ's interview. Don't forget to smash the like button, drop your comments and observations in the comments section and subscribe to the channel if you are yet to do so. You can also check out our other videos featuring interviews, tweets, and price predictions from some of the industry's brightest minds. Thanks and enjoy the video. It's a mixed mood right now. It's an interesting mood right now, I think. So um, from my experience, uh, from I joined, like I got into crypto in, from 2013, right? So that was one bull market um, that year. Um, so it went from 100 to to $1,000. And then, you know, there was one year of drop in 2014 and then 2015, we started to recover. And so it's one year sharp drop and then one year recovery and then one or two years of all time highs. So that's 2016, 2017, 2017, 21,000. Um, that was then everyone's uh, rushing in at the 2013 was like a Bitcoin cycle. Everyone's like, well, what was this new thing about Bitcoin? 2017 was an ICO year. So Ethereum, ERC-20 tokens, anyone can issue a token, a white paper, you know, uh, fundraising. Um, and then, so, and then, you know, 2018 happened, crash. And then 2019, painful recovery. And then um, 2020, 2021, are again, the sort of all-time high years again. And, you know, there was DeFi, NFTs, uh, Gamify, uh, Metaverse, um, all of this stuff. And all of this stuff are still quite new, but you know, a lot of money poured in. Uh, and then 2022, you know, um, there's <laughs> uh, three arrows, there's Luna, uh, there's FTX, so it was crusher. So I think now, even, even if we look at the price chart, we're kind of recovering. So now it's kind of a recovering mood and people are still very cautious. It's not like FOMO yet. But now there's like meme coins, which I don't really, which I don't really fully understand. <laughs> um, but there's also at this stage, it's unclear in one or two years what's the next drivers that will that will cause explosive growth, right? It, um, uh, is it is it? I don't think I think I think it might be something new, right? I think NFTs, uh, uh, DeFi, they will continue to grow, but those those were inventions of the last cycle. Um, they will continue to grow. Um, and there will be, there may actually be more realistic, realistic use cases, etc. But um, from the uh, from the from the angle, what's going to drive the next one? Is I think the the mood is everyone's looking for that right now. We don't, we're not sure, and this is why. And when we're not sure, this I think this is probably why a lot of people pile into meme coin, and they couldn't figure out what exactly is the next one. Meme coin sounds fun, and but it shows that there are funds uh, uh, that are, that are ready to be deployed. Right, so people people want to buy stuff, and they look at meme coins, they pile in. 
So that's my read. Um, uh, so it, we are at, a, I believe we're at an interesting inflection point. Uh, again, I could be, I could be very wrong. Um, hopefully, we are at the, we're, we're past the bottom of the of, of the bear market, and hopefully, we are in the start of a bull market. But again, this is not financial advice. This is just a feel, a mood thing. Um, but you, you can, I could very well be wrong. Yeah. There's nothing says we have to get another cycle. Um, history. Uh, the history pattern is quite clear if you look at it, but you know, uh, all swans were white until you saw a black one. So, um, um, and so history doesn't predict the future, and um, um, it, it, it we can't we can't just say because previously there was fairly distinct four year cycles, there's there's going to be a new one. So I think we got to take uh, take that into into consideration. Um, it may be, it may not. And so the way I usually uh, at, well, the way I would position businesses are. We should be prepared for a bull run. So we should got to make sure like our systems can handle another 10, 20, 30 X volume. Um, but we should also be prepared financially for, bear, for, for another 90% crash, right? So we got to have the, we got to have the stamina to last. So that's how, that's how we would run a business. That's how Binance is structured today. Um, so we can, we can survive on both sides. Uh, for people, um, I would usually recommend similar, um, uh, similar situations. During discussion on the podcast, one of the hosts asked CZ what he believes could be the next big idea in the digital asset space. As a result of the bear market and recent price declines, the cryptocurrency industry is not as exciting as it was for investors during the 2021 all-time highs period or even last year before the Terra Luna collapse. Many investors are wary of the lack of regulation and the impact of macro issues on crypto asset prices. But even one or two promising developments will bring back some of that excitement and euphoria. We saw that with the frog-themed meme coin Pepe. According to CZ, there are millions of investors on the sidelines waiting for the next big thing so they can jump in and make some profit. The Canadian business executive believes it might not even be one development but a string of new and revamped ideas that would awaken investors and the crypto markets in full force. Here are more clips from his discussion with the Bankless team. I think the question should be changed. Uh, it should be not singular, but multiple. So um, the que if we talk about internet, right, we wouldn't say what's the next big thing that will drive internet adoption. There's so many different things. There's video conferencing, there's you know social media, there's um, Google as an in information um, hive mind. Um, there's a lot of different things going on. Um, so in the early days, you may say, hey, what's the next thing? I think for crypt crypto blockchain is beyond one single thing now. So 2017, there was ICOs, right? That was ERC-20 tokens, basically. Um, and 2020, even 2021, there's multiple things going on. The next one may be multiple things. Um, it's no longer a single thing that drives adoption, I think, uh, because the industry is bigger, there's more players, so there's different sectors. We should be looking at what's the next big NFT thing? Or what's the ne next big DeFi thing? What's the next big uh, new things? Um, maybe social media for crypto has not been invented yet. Right. So, um, and there's some old use cases that have not taken off, but are slow, are starting to, uh, payments, right? Payments was one of the most u obvious use case, but there wasn't stable coins. There wasn't lightning network. Uh, there wasn't, uh, real time fast payments. Uh, and now there's faster blockchains. There's be, you no, know, there's, th there's been many new developments. And then we also have technologies that allow users to pay in crypto and the merchants accept just fiat. Uh, and the transaction, the transaction happens in real time, like Binance Pay, Binance Card, a few other credit card solutions um, on, in the market. So, and we're seeing uh, um, the global economy uh, in turmoil. So there's a lot of uh, uncertainty in traditional financial industries uh, in the in the global economy. Uh, we're seeing like uh, Africa. You know, now they, they the 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 mobile phone smart, the smartphone penetration is getting there. Uh, and now they're latching. They don't have banks. Um, only less than that, less than eleven percent of people in Africa have, uh, have banks, and they're just latching on directly onto blockchain. So all of those things can be potentials. Um, I don't know which one. I think we'll see multiple. Um, I guess you call them unicorns or however you call them. Multiple successful uh, new startups, new concepts, and plus old ones um, together that will shape the industry. Actually, I did do a talk in um, United Nations in Geneva, I think four, three, four, 2018, um, maybe 2019. Um, so I did do a talk, but that was more about how to use blockchain to enable um, uh, transparent charity philanthropy efforts. Um, but I think today, if I was gonna do another talk, I would say financial inclusion, financial access. 
um, if if that was if if we're talking if the audience is United Nations, there are many nations, many many people uh, without uh, financial access. Um, people in less developed countries take them days to pay a bill. Um, they don't they don't ha they don't have access to loans. They don't have access to uh, many many of the financial tools that we th we in developed worlds are quite used to. So that would be the message I would stress. And blockchain is that right technology. Um, there was this uh, fund that just in, that just gives loans to women um, that need loans to run their businesses in Africa. Um, they have the lowest default rate of any loan business on the planet. So these are these are real women that want to do business, but they have no access to financial to to, to financial tools, um, and they run very simple businesses that do make money, and they're able to return the loans in a period of time, and this really helps their lives. So um, I've actually. The name of the of the fund is just on on, uh, on the tip of my tongue, but I can't recall it. So these are these are great things, and they can do this with blockchain. They can do this with, uh, with much bigger scale um, using the new technologies. So all of this can be done. So if I was doing a talk like that, I'd probably research this a bit more on financial inclusion and just stress use cases in those areas. A few days ago, CEZ celebrated China's central television crypto-focused broadcast, alluding that such developments historically lead to bull runs. His tweet reads, CCTV, China Central Television, just broadcasted crypto. It's a big deal. The Chinese-speaking communities are buzzing. Historically, coverages like these led to bull runs. Not saying the past predicts the future, and not financial advice. According to reports, the broadcast aired on May 23rd and covered Hong Kong securities regulators creating a mandatory licensing system for digital asset providers. Julia Leon, the chief executive of Hong Kong Securities and Future Commission, SSC, noted that clear guidelines for crypto and other digital assets would help the industry sustain itself and foster more innovation in the region. She said, and I quote, providing clear regulatory expectations is the key to fostering responsible development. Hong Kong's comprehensive virtual assets regulatory framework follows the principle of same business, same risks, same rules, and aims to provide robust investor protection and manage key risks. This will enable the industry to develop sweatably and support innovation. According to the SFC, which has a consultation with industry leaders in February, the licensing system will kick off on the first day of June and firms that do not comply could lose their businesses. Operators of virtual asset trading platforms who are prepared to comply with the SFC's standards are welcome to apply for a license, the regulator announced. Those who do not plan to do so should proceed to an orderly closure of their business in Hong Kong. About two weeks ago, Strike founder and chief executive Jack Mallers also announced the global launch of the platform's app in over 65 countries, expanding access to its revolutionary payments and Bitcoin services to almost 3 billion people worldwide. These developments show that despite the bear market, there are lots of moves being made to prepare for the next bull run and the many opportunities that will come with it. When it does begin, the industry will be fully prepared for it. What are your thoughts on CZ's discussion with Bankless? What do you think will be the next big thing in the crypto and overall digital asset space? Please drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Also, sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos. Thanks for watching.